Atlanta's number one hip-hop station, Hot 107.9. You know, I, I talked to my brother before I even introduced him. I said, you know, while I'm here, we talked about it, just being one of God's disciples. Of course, it's me, Manny Supreme, Thanks. trying to change, break the music, especially being here in Atlanta. One of the biggest producers I remember being in high school, hearing Revenge for the first time, and I was like, yo, who is this? Like, if it was a mix of... Yay, Pharrell, God himself, Digital Nas in the building. Man, we you, here. Was, is that one of your best intros ever? That was the best intro. Hands down. Ever. Hands down. Time. How you feel? Yeah. You, you know, we always start off with the handshake. Yeah, yeah. I know y'all got like a secret handshake. Shout out to his homies. Yeah. He was in here talking about Brickhaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, they got to put me down. Brickhaven. How you feeling, man? Um, I'm feeling real, real good, to be Being honest. three, mm -hmm. like, you here in the city. Talk Back about home. just the, the, the whole process of when you first came up, Yachty, Cardi, just the, hey, the whole nine. Yeah, you can take it. Shout out, gang. You got to say what's up to the camera if you come into it. You got to yeah. say what's up to this it. Yeah, this is my boy Alien. He he, he films uh, we he films basically everything in my whole life. The GOAT. So if, when y'all get all this <laughs> Literally stuff, right now. Yeah, nah, when y'all get all this stuff we about to drop, it's because of him. Fire. We are, I was just on live. I, oh, I, no, no, I, for sure. Shout I told out my to fans I'd go on Instagram live. I think I seen, I seen that. For sure, yeah, man. That, that's like, before we even get to how, yeah. how it started, yeah. I talk to Weeso all the time. Shout mm -hmm. out Weeso. It's just with the music, and it's changing ever so quickly, mm -hmm. right? And I give you your flowers because with the whole, like, sonic, digital, like, wave of music, like, hearing, like, that, da -da 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 -da. I'm like, yo, what is this? It's like putting the pop into hip hop like mm -hmm. that was like unheard of especially being back then so like talk about early influences like what was some stuff your mom was jamming that you was like oh, you gotta look i ain't gonna lie it was mary j blige um kanye mm -hmm. uh um jay-z uh my mom didn't play too much of the the, the pop punk records i had to find that on my own how'd you find it though i found it from tony hawk like, really? Yeah, so just playing Tony Hawk, I would hear all these records. I'm like, this is killing rap. No offense to rap. Yeah. It was just it, sonically killing rap. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was killing. Mm -hmm. It was killing rap. Mm -hmm. It was my ears. It made me high off the music. Yeah, so yeah. for me, it was like hearing that, like, -na, and even hear different types of hip hop from wow. Tony Hawk. Like, Tony Hawk, Pro Skater 3 changed my life. You know what I'm saying? That was a legendary game. Yeah, Tony Hawk Underground was like, the next step after that that changed my life again. It was like every time Tony Hawk would drop a game, it was like a new high because mm -hmm. the music that was in the game. Maybe that soundtrack was going to be crazy. I always knew it. It was like, and then uh, once I dabbled into that, I started dabbling deeper into like Blink 182. I found out about Green Day from Tony Hawk. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I started liking more. So it wasn't snowball back. Snowball effect. Right? Yeah, it was a snowball effect after that. Like, so it wasn't like too much. I, I, didn't, get, I didn't get back into hip hop until like 20. 16. Really? Because I just I just never listened to rap. So you, you mentioned Tony Hawk, those mm -hmm. influences. Now you skated. You got a whole skate brand now. We got to mm -hmm. talk about it. 291. How, how did skating influence your music? If it wasn't for skating, I wouldn't be who I am today. Mm -hmm. um, skating made me who I am today. Like when it comes to like the way I think and the way I move and how like I naturally like go left when people go right. Yeah. That's from skating. And I feel like for me, it wouldn't be no digital knowledge without skateboarding mm. at all, like literally. Legit. It wouldn't even be me. So just starting off, I mean, first couple of hits you was putting out, I mean, mm. even some of the big ones. I mean, when you dropped the Lost Files, right, what was that thought process like collaborating with Bo? I mean, you still producing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He was on Done Approved too, a bunch of his new stuff. Mm -hmm. What was that process coming out? Because we saw one of your interviews, man. We saw was talking about it. You went to Georgia State, yep. didn't you? Mm -hmm. So Probably I go there that. now, crazy enough. Like, yeah. how was it back then? Like, was See, music dropped, that thing you was doing, or was Digital Nas a nerd before all this? this is uh, exclusive. I mean, I'm not afraid to say I was a nerd. I graduated with a full scholarship. It was something called Hope That's Scholarship. Legit. That's legit. So it's like, yeah, I graduated with a full scholarship. Hope Scholarship is something they had. Um, and uh, I dropped out, I did one year in college, I dropped out around 2017. Mm -hmm. It was just like, for me it was like, it didn't feel right. Like I had like everything, like it mm -hmm. wasn't like, oh my God, it wasn't It wasn't like, oh, uh, like I'm dropping out because like I'm behind. I, it, I had everything, I didn't yeah. have to pay for school, nothing like that, my mom was not feeling full me ride. dropping out. Yeah, I had a full ride. But I knew in my soul that it wasn't meant for me to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Sir. Now, what were you in school for? Uh, you want me to be real? Be I was in school for pre-law. I was about to be a lawyer. What? Yeah. You think that's Georgia State like was the best law school? It was. Yeah. It still is. Uh, so. Do you think like majoring in that played a role in like you know your being able to move through the industry and you know knowing those different things, or did you even get into your like major courses? Like, I didn't even get into it. Like I was still taking like the. The, the normal courses, uh, yeah. I didn't even get to study my practice because I was only in college for a year. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just, like, one year of straight partying, and then it was just, like... I'm out. I'm out. I knew it was, because that was around the time, like, for me, that was around the time we started taking off. Like, mm -hmm. me, Cardi, Yachty, we started bubbling. Mm -hmm. Yachty had signed his deal. Cardi was with Rocky. Mm -hmm. As soon as I dropped out, uh, I went to L.A. with Cardi, mm -hmm. and I was, I was chilling at Rocky Crib, chilling at whatever crib I could sleep at. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I knew, like, being around ASAP Rocky, being around all these big names mm -hmm. during that time period, I knew I could make it. It was like, if I'm around him now. There's no other. It's no, God oh, yeah. put me here yeah, for Yeah, that's when I knew. That's when I, as soon as I came back from L.A., I dropped out. I, I never officially dropped out either. I just never went. So like, you, I never so dropped out. So your name out. might still be on, like, a record. It got to be gone like, now. But we got to like, look, look that up. Yeah, like, I never officially dropped out. I stopped going. That's hard. So it was like. I know, but just being out yeah. there, going back to school, like sitting in class to a teacher, it's like, look, I was just with millionaires. Isn't that you could tell me? Yeah, it was just over with. Once I seen all that, mm -hmm. like I would see like, I remember one time I was at Rocky Crib, I, was, I seen Tyler the Creator pull up. And I just, I seen Kylie pull up. I seen like all these people pull up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, this is where I'm supposed to be. Right. And it, it was just that one glimpse of that. And it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a superstar. Like, I'm not meant for school. Yeah. Like, it was just, after that, it was a wrap. Now... When it comes to putting out music, I mean, your producing side from, like we said, like Revenge, mm -hmm. Run It, I mean, these were legendary songs that, I mean, to me, honestly, I think really got the underground, For especially sure. here in Atlanta, yeah. like Shake mm -hmm. How was your relationships with Bo and Cardi, like, before you guys blew up? Was this just like... We was just friends. Crazy. And you we didn't even know either yeah. one of them was going to blow nah. up. Nah. It was, I, I, bro, I never charged anyone for a beat until it came down to labels. Like, for me, it was just like, my friends, we cooking up. Yeah. I bought the mic, I bought the laptop, everybody recorded at my, I, I stayed right across from the 112 lofts, them lofts. By Georgia State. Yeah, the 112, you know, the lofts across. Yeah. That's where I stayed, so I With had the a. the Waffle House. Yup. That's crazy. So that's where all the hits was made in that building across from 112. That's crazy. Run It was made there, like. Little Boat was made there. All the early Yachty stuff, all the early car stuff was made in those lofts. Right on Georgia State. Yeah, so when y'all right say Georgia, Georgia State State's not legit, yeah. Nas is putting you down. You wouldn't be jamming some of your favorite songs if it wasn't. It was, I remember we made records, and like it got so big that we forgot we was big. Like it, We knew we was big when it was like we walked outside my loft and we heard Yachty, somebody driving by the Yachty. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, we just made, made this in there. Like Crazy. It's translating quickly. So when we seen that, it was just like... I don't know, bro. It was just crazy. Surreal. It was surreal. So, from producing for Boat and, and Cardi and, mm -hmm. then, you know, more recent congratulations, Grammy nominated. Just mm -hmm. Talk about working with Ye. How was that process? How did y'all meet? What was your collaborative? Because I see this funny meme all the time when Ye's like, I only listen to people that's younger than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how was it working with him? Just like that. Like, he took all of my advice. I, I, I had, I, and... This is this is like off the record. I don't think I ever said this in an interview. I have full, really full creative control on Donda and Donda Two. Like he was really listening to me on both of those albums. So it was just like it was really good to go into those albums and kind of guide him on where to take the music right. and to see the reaction, which is which is what led me to really going in and having full control of Donda Two because he's seen how well Remote and Junior translated and uh, um, so that yeah, that's what led to Donda Two. But I met Ye through this. Uh, designer named Moa Lola. At the time, she was a, um, a creative director on the Yeezy Gap team. That's right. So yeah, she she was playing my music around Ye, and he asked me to come in. I came in, and Crazy. I spent the last two years of my life with Ye. Crazy. So being out there, because we saw the Generation Now music mm -hmm. uh, interview, and you y'all was out there actually at the crib. Bro, when, when Hakeem did that interview, Shout out Hakeem, yeah, he pulled up to the to Soho House, where we were working on Donda 2. Crazy. Yeah. And, so and we you, did it in my room that I was saying. Y'all wake up like at the crack of dawn. Was, it like, was it taking time to adjust to that? Because to me, that's like when my mom comes in my room and wakes me up at eight, I'm like, back up. It's too early. Uh, How was it? 
it was just, it reminded me of high school. Just literally, Honestly. like, security would come wake us up, like, wake up, everybody. Security would come bang on the door, everybody staying at staying at the uh, Soho house, wake us up at 8 a.m. every day. Were there any hard heads that, like, slept? Yeah, or, like, I was one of them. I remember one time, Ye had, Ye, um, we was at, we have our 8 a.m. meetings, Ye was like, is Nas still on the album? Because I didn't show up. <laughs> I walked in, like, three minutes later, like, yeah, I was about to get left off the album what? just because I didn't wake up in time, yes. You're like, no, I'm right here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hey, I'm right here. Yeah. That's crazy. A lot of people got left off that album just because they couldn't wake up. So the listening parties, when it came to Atlanta, how legendary was that from, like like I said, producing down the street? Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah. if you know Atlanta, mm -hmm. 112 is not far from the Ben Stadium. Mm -hmm. To being here with a sold-out stadium with... Yeah, not even saying a word, just listening to his music, and you there like, yeah, this is my, this is my shit right here. Dude, I cried. You really? get what I'm saying? Like, I cried. Because it was just like, for a long time, I kind of felt like a lot of people left me in the dirt. I kind of felt like I influenced SoundCloud as, as a company. I kind of felt like I, I helped a lot of people cultivate a sound that changed the world and i kind of felt like for a long time they kind of took it to where they were going and left me to, in the dirt mm -hmm. so for a long time it was like damn i quit making music in all honesty this is off the record too and the whole year of 2019 i stopped making music because i gave up i quit because i felt like damn i did all this and niggas left me in the dirt mm -hmm. and then and then 2020 came around and yay revived me back no cap. I was not making music when Ye called me. Crazy. When I got that call to work with Ye, I wasn't even making music. That's how I know it was meant for me to do this. Mm. Literally, I quit. I gave up. I was like, bro, I'm way too hard. I have not. I don't. I do not get the respect I get for what I've done. I quit. Wow. No cap. So shout out Ye for mm -hmm. bringing back real sound. Like we mentioned before, talk about these new collabs. Like. It's people like BK that sound. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so many new artists. Talk about your relationship with BK. Like, how is that? I know one of your biggest songs is, you know, the OK. Yeah. So like, how, how did that even come about? Cause yeah. TikTok picked uh, that up. Yeah, they did. Uh, BK, um, she was one of the people that came around me when I wasn't making music. Mm -hmm. So, she, uh, I met her through this girl named Hook, and then they both came to my house. I'm like, mind you, I'm not making music. Yeah. She's like, she's like. Nah, that's work. I'm like, bro, I don't care about music. Y'all got it. Yeah. I had a full studio in my basement. So you weren't even going down there. No, nah, bro. I didn't. I didn't make music when I met BK. Mm -hmm. Like it was just like friends. I was just ma making more friends. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was just like I don't give a fuck. You know, freak. And then I, I, uh, I had they. They asked me for beats. I said, just go through my laptop. Get whatever you want. I had hits on there. And then that's when Summer got made. Crazy. That beat was like a beat on my laptop I made in 2016. She. Like, I'm literally, like, I got hits on my computer. Like, mind you, like, imagine this. Like, Digital Nas quits. Nothing but hits on his computer. I'm telling her, just go through have whatever you want. And just take it. Take it. Free of charge. Free of nothing. I don't you know care. Those are some of BK's, like, biggest songs. Yeah. Right and then that's what happened. Insane. Mm -hmm. So, with, with your clothing brand, we got to talk about it before we get to DN3. Mm -hmm. How did it come about? You know, shout out Skirt, man. One of my homies, Lil Skirt. Lil Skirt. Oh, uh, he's yeah. crazy coming out. One of the hardest. I'm putting you yeah. down now. Yeah. Um, yes. How did it come? In, like you got on, you got your own warehouse. Like, yeah. The whole clothing line. I see you guys went to St. Louis. Like how was that? Man, that pop up was crazy. Um, the the clothing line is an ode to to my roots with skateboarding. It's a skate company. Mm. So I got a skate team. We're filming our. We're st we're literally filming our first drop that we're gonna do with the skaters right as we speak. But right. like for two nine one, it was just like an ode to to. Uh, my skateboarding roots, I kind of felt like I owed it to them. I've been skateboarding my whole life, and mm -hmm. I always felt like I owed something to the skate community. Mm -hmm. In a good way, though, not yeah. in a bad way. So 29131 is that, and, and that's what that is. It's just like my plans and goals with that is to make sure that it's bigger than Supreme. Fire. Yeah. That's and fire. not because I want to be better. I've never heard nobody say that. Yeah, though, not because I want to be better than Supreme. I just noticed Michael Jackson quote. He, he said, study the greats and be greater. Mm -hmm. And that's just my that's the great for me. Supreme is my great in fashion and clothing. I want to be greater than Supreme. And that's my goal with, with my skate skate company. Crazy. Have you showed Ye like some of the designs? Yeah, I showed I showed the first day I met Ye, I was wearing the two nine one pants. He, I know he, he was like, asked yes. about them. And it's so abstract. How'd you yeah. come up with the logo? I was on a website and it was the actual it was the capture. Like you know how you fill out a capture, mm -hmm. so I just took it and I was like, Yeah, this is the company. Pieced it together. Yeah. Insane. It was literally a capture. Insane. Now, DN3 is on the way. It's coming very soon. Mm -hmm. I got some exclusives. 
And Thanks. God's timing to me personally. The best one? Like, and yeah. then I liked how you you was like, yeah, I like that one. That did. Yeah. I had to write that back. I was like, did he just talk? And it's like yeah. you dropped the mic on him. Like, Yeah, I did. What was your process with DN3? Like, How was that? DN3 is my message to the world that you should never sleep on one of the greatest to ever do it ever in your life. Straight lights. Say that one more time. Ever you got to look life. directly at that one. You should never sleep on one of the greatest to ever touch the mic ever in your life. Can we show them? Bring the mic. Y'all yeah. got the mic? We got to bring the mic over here. see. First off, before we got it, we got to show y'all the mic. This is this is the new mic I cut vocals Put them down. On. It's uh, MBHO. Put them down. M219. Right. I know y'all so re used to what y'all record on, but this is like my new swag. You know what I'm saying? It's handmade mic. It's not expensive. You can only get it at one retailer. And I'll let I'll let y'all find that because my goal is to eventually do a collab with them. That's fire. So when when Dale Pro Audio sees this interview, fire. sponsor and and MBHO, the company who made this mic, sees this interview, I want y'all to know I dig deep and I search. I know this is a rare mic, and fire. I want to bring light to this mic. But yeah. I, before I bring light to this mic, I would like to do a collab with y'all. Crazy, shout out. So Nas, before we get out of here, any last minute shout outs? What should they expect from you? Like what's coming? Um, like ASAP. For me, I want them to expect nothing but the greatest work. Mm -hmm. And um, DN3 is the the next um, piece of art that I'm dropping. And uh, I want y'all to expect that DN3. Fire. Mm -hmm. Rolling loud on the way. Oh yeah, I'm oh, performing so. at Rolling Loud. No right booking here. agent. I seen the story. One yeah, day. and then it's positive. like, and like I said, I got I got some deals on the table, but until I get the right, right, right deal, mm -hmm. DN3 won't come out. He said he needs 300 million. So you heard that right here. Yeah, because it's like I see these people getting all these crazy deals, and the work is mediocre. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if y'all, if DN3 comes, when DN3 comes out, I want y'all to know that I did get top a top of the line deal. Straight like that yeah. here. On Atlanta's number one hip-hop station, DN3, on the way with my dog, Digital Nines. Changing history, changing music, just like that.